The UFC 300 press conference just took place featuring Alex Pereira, Jamal Hill, Zhang Weili, Yan Zhao Nan, Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway, Charles Oliveira, Armand Sarukian, Bo Nickel, Cody Brundage for some bizarre reason, Yuri Prasca, Alexander Rakic, Calvin Cater, Aljamain Sterling, Holly Holm, Kayla Harrison, Sadiq Youssef, Diego Lopez, Jalen Turner, Hanato Moicano, Jessica Andrade, Marina Rodriguez, again for some bizarre reason, Bobby Green, Jim Miller, Davison Figueroa, and Cody Garbrandt. What a press conference this was. So they start it off. There's so much to discuss. Big announcements, increased performance bonuses. The Octagon canvas is going to be blue for some bizarre reason. I don't know if Dana White was serious about that. The media tried their best. The MMA media tried their very best to ruin and destroy this press conference. And they kind of did. And I'll get to that, but I don't want to be a negative Nancy. I want to talk about the coolness of this UFC 300 press conference. They start with a promo for UFC 300. It's cool, but why are we getting slow-mo shots of Jessica Andrade and Marina Rodriguez? Who knows? They've got to include everyone. I understand. They've got, like, epic shots of Brundage walking to the cage. Like, no one cares. They finish with the promo, though. And I'm thinking, okay, they're going to announce all of the fighters one by one. And they're all going to come up on stage. And a sheet drops from the ceiling. And every single fighter is on the stage, revealed all at once, out of nowhere. A big surprise. Everyone's clapping and cheering, having an Alex Pereira who's sat there like he has no idea what's going on. And the crowd goes crazy. Great opening for the press conference. Drop the sheet. Everyone's up on stage. Epic and hype. We get into some of the key moments of this press conference. And then I'm going to absolutely slander the MMA media for again trying their best to ruin the fun of this press conference. And again, just ruining the fun of the press conference. Because they're so dumb. And we st I swear to God, all it will take to fix the MMA media at press conferences is one man with a device that can count chromosomes as they come in. If they've got one extra, don't let them on the mic asking questions. Like it's just, they ruin the press conference every time. It's so annoying. Either way though, some of the cool moments. One of the media members should be thanked heavily for this, by the way. They mentioned that Justin Gaethje and Max Holloway both asked for increased performance bonuses because normally it's 50k. We've seen Dana White do 75k performance bonuses now and again, and that was quite hype. The fighters start offering up numbers. Max Holloway says... Do 300. He starts saying, do 300. And then Dana White's like, okay, done. With regret and sadness on his face, dare I add, which he then turned into a smile. He did not want to be pressured into sinking an extra quarter of a million dollars into every performance bonus. But now, for UFC 300, all of the performance bonuses are going to be $300,000 dollars. That's not the show money, that's not the win money, that's the performance bonus. So you know for a fact, every this is going to make the card so much more entertaining. Every single one of these fighters is going to be honing for that 300k performance bonus, and we are going to get absolute scrap. So you know what, even though Dana White maybe didn't want to be peer pressured by every single fighter on stage, in hindsight, Dana, trust me, you kind of want this. Because he didn't say he was going to give a bonus out to everyone. And if it was going to be a 50k bonus, he probably would have ended up giving out a performance bonus to anyone who got a finish anyway. So no matter what, he would have spent more on performance bonuses. But now that he's doing this, and he says that four people are getting 300k if they put on a good performance, all of the fighters are going to go to war. Gamrot. Even if Gamrot was on this card, he'd be throwing wheel kicks. You know what I mean? You could have Mateus Gamrot and Bilal Mohamed on this card. If they heard that, Bilal's opening the fight with a jumping front kick to the face. You, the card is going to be so exciting now. But there's other stuff to discuss. Blue canvas. Someone asked what color the octagon's going to be. Dana White said blue. He might be joking. I hope he's joking. 
it would make no sense for there to be a blue canvas whatsoever. We have other things to discuss. All of it is slander against the, U against the UFC. All of it is absolute slander. But we had some hype moments. The press conference itself wasn't fun. There was no big moment where two fighters went hugely back and forth. Jamal Hill was the only one that created that kind of, kind of dynamic with his opponent. Um, even though he was quite nice to Alex Pereira backstage, Alex Pereira said he ranked him fourth in terms of skill at the light heavyweight division. And I guess that just got on Jamal Hill's nerves. And then with a really bad weight cut voice, which a lot of fighters had on this stage, especially Jalen Turner, who we could barely even hear, by the way, all of them had weight cut voice. Jamal Hill and him start going back and forth at the end of it, talking about how they're going to knock each other out. And Alex Pereira says, you know, I'm going to make you remember this moment forever. And then uh, Jamal Hill starts saying, I'm going to be on your ass. No diddy, you know what I mean? On your ass. Uh, I'm going to be in your face. You know, I'm, I'm used to this. I'm used to this scenery. Uh, Jamal Hill had this drink bottle that was like a, one of those Poetan totem statues that there are. And the Easter Island statues that were sort of beaten up and had a black eye and a cut over it as well. So he did put in some effort to try and make something of the press conference. So I respect Jamal Hill for that. He tried to make it entertaining. Um, most of the other fighters, though, again, everyone got one question. So there wasn't anyone that got left out. But again, fighters, have we got anything else to offer a press conference, please? The slander begins now. I didn't have many things to... <laughs> I didn't have many nice things to say about it, I guess. The face-offs were really cool. They really were. Yuri and Rakic had a little bit of back and forth, but it wasn't huge because they don't speak English natively. Um, but still, um, there were good face-offs. I liked seeing them all backstage waiting for the face-offs and you could see like them interacting with each other. Oliveira and Pereira chopping it up back and forth and all of this. And... Um, it was such a weird press conference, though, because although I was hype, because it's UFC 300, look at all these amazing names on stage. UFC fighters, I don't care what dumb brain rot question you get asked by one of these dumb, big, fat, dumb, dumb media members. Give us something other than we're going to find out Saturday night. Please, I beg of you, MMA fighters, UFC fighters that are at these press conferences, something other than honor to be here, huge card, feels really good to be on this card, it's a big deal, I'm looking forward to Saturday night, because that was, I'm not joking, half of their answers on stage, that's what it was, half of their answers were that, great time, the crowd got hyped for certain fighters. I didn't even think they would. Bo Nickel got booed for being on stage. I think I, I literally heard an audible who when Cody Brundage was asked a question. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I heard a, a, a Joaquin Buckley jumped in at the end and asked to be on the St. Louis main event. Shout out Joaquin Buckley for taking that opportunity, dude. He capitalized in a major way. Dana White just completely sh uh, shrugged him off though and said... You know, see y'all later. You know, I mean, immediately moved on after that. I don't know why they don't want Buckley as the main event. They'd rather Derek Lewis and Rodrigo Nascimento for Haya, I guess. At least get Buckley on the card, though. After he'd done that and put himself in that spotlight and spoke about the St. Louis event, you got to at least have him in the co-main event. At least. Come on. Either way, the media members are dumb. They're just dumb, stupid little creatures. And I'm sick to death of them. Some of them would ask some questions that are basic. And trust me, then it's on the fighters to try and sort of hype things up a little bit. I'm going to say this right now. Bobby Green got one question. Jamal Hill, I felt like, got about two. Why the fuck did Kayla Harrison get Four or five questions. Garbrandt's on stage. Oliveira's on stage. Jamal Hill's on stage. Alex Pereira. Max Holloway. Justin Gaethje. These fighters got about two or three questions. Why, oh fucking why, did Kayla Harrison get more questions than some of the biggest stars the sport has to offer? 
I don't understand why the MMA media is so far detached from the MMA fan base in terms of what they think we want to hear. I would have been absolutely A-OK, I'll be honest with you, if we didn't hear a fucking peep out of Bo Nickel, Cody Brandage, Kayla Harrison, Holly Holm, Jessica Andrade, and Marina Rodriguez. Don't get me wrong. Like, they're good fights. I would enjoy the fights. But in that press conference, we could have done with less on stage and more questions for the ones that actually deserve to be on stage. Hanato Moicano is one of the best fighters on the microphone. And during his one question, he gave some energy. He showed that he was there to entertain at the press conference. And they did not go back to him for the rest of the press conference not once. Jalen Turner is dying trying to make weight because he's a weight bully, six foot four or six three at lightweight. He's a coward, so he's draining himself. He can barely speak. He looks like the corpse of KSI up on stage. He can't speak. Like, ask Hanato Moicano questions. Rile up Hanato Moicano. Bobby Green was hyped up. Jamal Hill was hyped up. If you're an MMA media member, see who's hyped up and direct your questions towards them. Do not, and I repeat, do not ever in your life at a UFC 300 press conference get up there and say, hey Dana, uh, when are you coming back to Manchester, England? Uh, we hear rumors of July 20th. Uh, uh, yeah, can you confirm that? We're at UFC 300. The biggest event of all time. You've got the biggest, some of the biggest stars of the sport on the stage right now. Ready to answer questions. And normally the most fun you get out of a fighter is once you get past their initial answer of happy to be here, looking forward to this weekend. If you get past that stage, then you can get some good answers out of them with some different questions that you could ask. They were up there. There was a guy asking about WrestleMania and Dana's thoughts on WrestleMania. We aren't 12 and we're allowed within 100 feet of a primary school or elementary school if you're American. We aren't WWE fans. We are not 12 years old and we are allowed to walk past a school road. We are not WWE fans. Do not fucking waste a minute of the press conference time asking about wrestle fucking mania. Okay? Don't do that shit. Pissed me the fuck off. Then another guy asking, are we going to have a female BMF belt? Just trying to gotcha moment, Dana White. Asking about if there should be a female BMF belt. When they have a fun fight, you let me know. You know what I mean? Maybe it should have been a one-time thing for Zhang versus Yoana Wan. Jesus Christ. Um, any updates on when you're coming back to Spain, Dana? What are you asking? I hate them. I hate the MMA media. And I, I really despise them with all my guts. They are the dumbest, lowest scum of society. And they're somehow journalists for MMA. They are the dumbest, lowest, most filthy, disgusting human beings on this planet. And for some reason, they have somehow been compelled to find their way onto a microphone at a UFC press conference for UFC 300 so they can ask Dana White, when are we going to see an event in Honduras? I cannot believe the... Let me try and keep this monetized. It pisses me off beyond belief. I loved that there was a 300k bonus. I loved the idea. I was waiting the whole time for an announcement, by the way. We didn't get that. I was waiting the whole time. I was waiting for the lights to go dim. <laughs> My live chat's been hearing me say this for the past two days. I was waiting for the end of this thing and then Dana White to say, 
We got one more thing for you guys. The lights to go dim, and then you out of the darkness you hear, Hey, fellas, Conor McGregor jumps on the stage, and then boom, McGregor Chandler is announced. I don't know why they wouldn't announce that at UFC 300. Maybe they're going to plan on announcing something at the actual event at UFC 300, but the press conference is like, you got 160,000 fans watching live. I think that's what it peaked at. 160,000 fans watching live. Now was the time to announce something big at the end of it. But they did not. Um, at the very start, we got that news that there wasn't going to be this big announcement because someone asked Dana, you know, we hear rumors of a big announcement. What you got for us? And he said, uh, don't believe everything you hear online. And that's basically what it was. Um, honestly, if there wasn't a 300k performance bonus, there wouldn't really be a highlight from this press conference. Sad to say. One of the biggest press conferences of all time. All of the big names on stage that you have for this event. If there wasn't a 300k performance bonus being announced, what else is a huge moment? Jamal Hill and Alex Pereira going back and forth a little bit where Pereira just doesn't even understand him. And Jamal Hill screaming at him about being on his ass. No, did he? And uh, just screaming at him about things. I respected that Jamal Hill brought the energy, even though he very clearly had weight cut voice. But like... The media members, man. Diego Lopez got a huge cheer. I'll talk about who got cheers and who got boos. Bo Nickel got booed. Cody Brundage, I swear to God I heard someone say who in the crowd. I swear to God I heard that. Um, Oliveira's obviously getting cheers. Pereira's obviously getting cheers. Jamal Hill got a mix because it's like, he's the American. He's not hated, but he's not Pereira to people in the crowd. So it was a bit of a mix up. Um, Armand Sarukian looked like it was actually bothering him how much he got booed. He got viciously booed because Oliveira fans are... They're, they really love Oliveira. You know what I'm saying? Maybe in a, uh, a haram way, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, they really, really are a fan of Oliveira. So they were really viciously booing Armand Sarukian. Um, other than that, Diego Lopez got a big cheer. No one gave a shit about Kayla Harrison, Holly Holm, Jessica and Drajo Marina Rodriguez, as you would expect. And uh, no one else really got cheered. Sadiq Youssef got a few boos. Jalen Turner, you couldn't even hear him because he's like, he's there looking like fucking salad fingers on stage, completely dehydrated, dead on stage. Like, I, the stuff he goes through to feel like to have an advantage over an opponent is insane. He's dying up on stage. He can barely speak with any level of volume. Moicano got a cheer. Money Moik, always going to get a big pop. Garbrandt got a cheer. Figueredo, mixed opinions, of course. He's fighting Garbrandt. But God, some basic answers. Some basic ass questions. I wanted Bobby Green to throw a monster energy drink at Armand Sarukian's head. I thought they were going to have some beef. Bobby Green got asked a joint question with Jim Miller. I like that one uh, media member. He asked a WrestleMania question afterwards and then asked about a female BMF belt because he's a child in the brain and he watches WWE. But what he did do is hype up Jim Miller, which I really liked. What I would have loved if someone have, uh, to have done was to really just read out Jim Miller's accolades and let the people watching know that this guy's a legend. Um, so that was really cool that he was hyping up Jim Miller. Um, Jim Miller got a few questions. He answered them very well. He's actually pretty decent on the mic. He said he would be around for UFC 400 if there was uh, going to be a 400k bonus. Um, shut the fuck up about WrestleMania. Shut the fuck up about when the UFC is coming to Miami. Uh, we know the UFC is going to Manchester in July. We know Nathaniel Wood got announced for July 20th. Tom Aspinall has said that they're going to Manchester in July. Why are you still asking this at a press conference, you dumb little pea-brained sludge of a human? Why are you asking about that right now? It, when are you coming to Spain? Like, this one guy just... And let me get me let me get something straight here as well about these fucking translators. That fat Brazilian guy. Big fucking fat, bald Santa Claus Brazilian guy. Fucking acai claws is speaking when he asks his question no joke i swear to god he was rambling for about a minute straight not 30 seconds not 20 seconds he was asking a question for about a minute straight these fucking media members love the sound of their own voice feel like it's their big moment on the screen to ask a question 
You are irrelevant to us. No one will remember you. No one will ever remember you for anything you do. Ask your fucking sentence of a question and get the fuck off the fucking microphone. I'm sick and tired of these media members. Someone needs to do something about it, whether it be a chromosome check at the door. Who knows? We need to do something about these media members. And again, I wonder this. Why did Kayla Harrison get more questions than Hanato Moicano, than Jamal Hill, than... I think Oliveira and Pereira got the most. Because they got it in English and in Brazilian. Get more questions than Jamal Hill. Get more questions than Bobby Green, who had some level of energy he wanted to give. He didn't even get asked a direct question, Bobby Green. He tagged on to Jim Miller's question, which was like a joint question for the both of them. We're sharing questions for Jim Miller and Bobby Green, but Kayla Harrison's getting four or five directly asked to her. When I heard Dana White say, all right, guys, two more questions. When I heard Dana White say that, I thought to myself, Oh, okay, right. Well, someone's going to capitalize and get one for Bobby Green, one for Jamal Hill, because they're bringing the energy, one for Moicano maybe as well. They're bringing the energy to these press conferences. Yeah, one for Kayla Harrison. Um, How does it feel to be here at this event? So annoying. Stop. They ruin everything because they're subhuman, low IQ monsters, and they are just dumb, dumb, dumb humans that do not actually think in their brains. They don't have a conscious thought going on. And by the way, I thought that looking at Garbrandt at this press conference. I don't mean to slander him, but Garbrandt, there's nothing going on behind his eyes. He's absolutely lizard-brained. And it might help him in MMA, but God, there is nothing going on behind that guy's eyes. Face-offs were cool. Again, I was expecting the lights to go dim in here. Hey, fellas, as McGregor comes out. I was wondering if Dana was going to walk back his uh, 300k announcement because he said, all right, 300. I bet you there's going to be at the post-fight press conference. Someone's going to ask him, uh, Dana, so who got the $300,000 bonus? What? What? Wait, wait. I gave out 300k dollars? I gave out 300,000? Ah, come on. I meant 300 bucks. I thought he would like try and walk it back a little bit, but it turns out 300k is is on the table. You know, people are joking about how's Ariel going to cope about this one. He meant 300 bucks. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. But again, all right, big moment. I'm hyped. I was telling people like spam Jerome and the whole chat was flooded with let's go Jerome Holloway, which was crazy. Then I said, just spam MMA Guru. And throughout the face-offs, the last two face-offs, the whole chat was spamming MMA Guru. So I appreciate you guys. We peaked at about like 7,000 live viewers in my like reaction to a press conference which is insane um but yeah brazilian it's all good portuguese questions lasting a minute long it was fun i'm okay with it we got some big viral moments out of it and that's all you can really hope for out of a press conference these days right even if it's not going to be too crazy fun even if it's not going to be like a wild moment where kiesa tries to punch kevin lee and gets caught in the fucking face um you know it's still going to be some kind of viral moment that comes from it. And for this one, with all of the biggest stars in the UFC on stage, the biggest viral moment was Dana White getting basically bullied into... <laughs> getting bullied. Absolutely bullied into uh, making a 300k performance bonus, which I'm, which I'm happy for because now all the fighters are going to put on better performances. They're all going to be hungry for that money. And even like Sadiq Yusuf was trying to chime in and say, uh, is that bonus for everyone who gets a finish? And then Dana was like, all right, buddy, shut up. <laughs> You're fucking fired. See you at PFL, bud. You just earned yourself a one-way ticket at PFL, buddy. You know what I mean? I was, I was wondering if Dana was going to lose it then because Sadiq was really pushing. You know what I mean? You've already got the 300K bonuses. Chill. <laughs> Don't ask every fight on the card to get one. But either way, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. That was the press conference. I'm amped for the fights this weekend. And uh, hopefully everyone makes way. It's cool seeing the pictures though. That's great promotion. They got pictures backstage of all the champions, the former champs. Gaethje's not a former champ. I'm, uh, you know, it's all good though. BMF don't count. Interim don't count. All good though. They had like Gaethje, Yuri, Figueredo, Jamal Hill, uh, Aljo, Pereira, Zhang Wei Li, Oliveira. And Draj, I guess, is a former champion as well. Holly Holm. Cody Garbrandt, Max Holloway, 
And uh, I'm really looking forward to the fights. Really looking forward to the fights. Holloway's gone put Gaethje away, you know. Gaethje gone be extra looking for that performance bonus. He's going to leave himself vulnerable. I'm telling you. Holloway's going to have the clearer head out there. And I also think it does factor into predictions, right? I think these fighters who are normally wild and normally bonus hunters, they're going to be a bit more vulnerable looking for those bonuses. So I think it values the finishing instinct fighter in certain ways if the finishing instinct fighter is like composed. But if the finishing instinct fighter is aggressive and overwhelming, it might leave them open. So we'll see. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Toodle pip. I'll see you later. Goodbye.